Hi dear students, you are welcome in this video. Dear students, we have started a series on history of English literature and we are covering 18th century literature nowadays. We have covered so many poets and authors in this series and today we have again a new poet for our discussion. Today we are going to discuss about uh, William Cooper, an 18th century poet who is important in the whole series of history of English literature. First, we will understand his life and career important works and then we will think about uh, one of his most important poems and at the end, I will discuss the place of William Cooper in the whole history of English literature. So, let's start. Uh, here, hash 33 history of English literature. We are covering 18th century literature and we have a poet called William Cooper. Now, dear students, uh, though the spelling of uh, William Cooper, C-O-W-P-E-R, is there, but its pronunciation is Cooper and not the copper. So, remember its pronunciation, Cooper. First, his life, he was born at Great Burkham State, Hertfordshire in 1731. If you look at the life of uh, William Cooper or his childhood, you will understand he, he, the story of his life is a pathetic story of a genius who is shy and timid. At the age of six years, he was sent to boys school and there he had very grim experiences and uh, these school experiences affected his mind. When he was sent to a school, uh, it was basically a school of boys and there the other boys who were there in the school bullied. Uh, to William Cooper and this bad experiences affected his mind for the whole life and uh, most of the time he felt melancholy, he felt loneliness, he also uh, suffered from insanity in the last years of his uh, life. So this was the life of William Cooper right from the childhood. He was a timid uh, boy, he was a shy boy and he was bullied by other uh, students there in the school and uh, these grim experiences, grave experiences, serious experiences lasted long for his life. Dear students, he studied law for 12 years and uh, once he attempted suicide. Now there is a story of the attempt of his suicide. Uh, he studied law for 12 years and after that there was an examination. He had to appear for the examination and interview and uh, Due to the phobia in his mind regarding that exam or regarding that interview, he felt nervous and in the feet he tried suicide. But he recovered from the trauma of suicide. He uh, was saved by the other uh, persons who were there and uh, there uh, he felt this trauma for 12 months and after 12 months he recovered. And later, he settled uh, in the family of Unwins. Uh, there was a family called Unwins and uh, he settled in their family and uh, he got a lot of help from the Mr. and Mrs. Unwins. And he composed a very fine poem called The Mary. And The Mary is uh, no other than Mrs. Unwin. Dear students, the school experiences uh, appeared in Tyrosinium or a review of the schools published in 1784. He worked with John Newton uh, who was a curate at Olney. Now this collaboration is very important. Uh, the collaboration with uh, uh, Mr. John Newton because they composed the religious hymns called Olney hymns and still these hymns are very famous. With the help of Newton, uh, Cooper uh, could publish these only hymns and still we find these hymns are recited in churches in America and in Europe too. Uh, in the rest of his life, uh, he felt melancholy and uh, suffered from insanity. In the last years, he struggled with insanity and died in 1800. So it was a very pathetic end, dear students. He suffered from insanity and uh, he died in the same feats of insanity in 1800. He was buried in St. Nicholas Church, East Dareham. So, this was the genius William Cooper. Now, dear students, let's talk about his important poems. Actually, he composed so many poems, but here we will list only important poems. Very first, we have The Task, published in 1785. Then we have famous only hymns, 1788 to 1779. Then we have John Gilpin, 1782. Homer's Iliad and Odyssey translated by William Cooper in 1791. 
uh, right from Greek into English. Then we have his famous poem, The Castaway, 1803, The Rose, 1783, To Mary, 1793. And again, we have poems by William Cooper, Of the Inner Temple, 1782. Now, this is uh, his first collection of poems he published on himself, uh, the poems by William Cooper, The Inner Temple. So, this is uh, a very important collection and uh, from this collection, he gained momentum in the life of English people as a poet. Now, dear students, among all these uh, poems, we have most important the task. Because the task is still studied today, still it read for different reasons. So, what is the task? Let's understand. So, task is his longest poem written in blank verse. Now, what is blank verse? Blank verse is nothing but the unrhymed lines with iambic pentameter. Now, uh, these lines mostly are composed in iambic pentameter. So, these lines are unrhymed. Uh, we are talking about blank words. Now, what is iambic pentameter? Iambic pentameter is nothing but a type of meter in which we find the sequence of uh, unstressed syllable followed by stressed syllable for five times. So, you have pentameter. Penta means five. So, this meter repeats for five times in the line or in the poem and basically it is written in I am. So, I am is nothing but an unstressed syllable followed by stressed one. So, this is the pattern. Remember this pattern. It is important. Uh, dear students, this poem is composed in six books or six parts. Here we have his six parts or six books. Very first, the sofa. Second, the timepiece. Third, the garden. Fourth, the winter evening. Fifth, the winter morning walk and the last we have the winter walk at noon. All these uh, parts or all these books are very famous because task is the longest poem. And we have these uh, different types of parts of the same poem, the task. Now the task deals with blessings of nature, retired life, religious faith, attack on slavery, blood sports, fashionable frivolity, lukewarm clergy, French despotism, etc. So, there are so many topics covered in the poem called task and we have different themes in the task and one of the major themes if you read these uh, books or all the parts of the task you will understand it is anti-slavery. So, he is talking about slavery and the people who are suffering from the slavery, the people who are suffering uh, from the inhuman behavior by others. So, this is very important. In those he could write, he dared to write on the slavery. Uh, now, let's understand some of the famous quotations by William Cooper. Here we are very first from Light Shining Out of Darkness. It's uh, only hymns published in 1779. God moves in a mysterious way, his wonders to perform. He plants his footsteps in the sea and rides upon the storm. Now, these lines or this hymn is very important. Why? Because the English language has received a statement or a phrase or a line called God moves in a mysterious way. Now, this has become proverb in the uh, Europe and uh, we have a very famous line. This is the God moves in a mysterious way. Means God has to perform so many uh, kinds of actions or so many kinds of acts and we, the human beings, are nothing but the uh, people who are driven by the force of God or who are driven by uh, the actions of God, the acts of God. And hence, he is uh, saying that God is everything. God is almighty. God made the country and man made the town. It is taken from the sofa, the task, 1785. Now, this uh, line also is very important. God made the country and we made the town. Means human beings made the town. Country means he is talking about the whole world and we have made towns means different types of parts we have built in the uh, this world. So, God made the country. So, God is the creator and we human beings have to live in his creation as his creation. So, God is almighty. God is the ultimate truth and hence he is talking God made the country or God moves in a mysterious way. Next. There is a pleasure in the poetic pains which only poets know. It is taken from the timepiece, the task, second book, 1785. Uh, now, dear students, uh, we talked about that he is talking about the uh, slavery or his stance is anti-slavery. 
and hence he is saying that uh, there is a pain in writing poetry actually the pleasure of pain is known by the poet because the poet sees the world because the poet observes what is happening around him and william cooper observed the slavery and he is writing on that slavery and hence he, he is saying that there is a pain in writing it's not so simple uh, taking pain and writing on a paper but what you see what a poet see around uh, his society or around him he has to write on that and hence he is feeling pain so this is the pain felt by poet according to william cooper now dear students let's understand what is his place in the whole history of english literature here we have very first statement by st coleridge he is saying that the best modern poet why is saying so we have uh, some reasons like he is the forerunner to romantic poetry because he changed the narrative of romantic poetry or uh, we can say him or we can consider him as a forerunner to romantic poetry because he diverted the attention of writing on nature to the uh, mundane life to the everyday life and scenes from the countryside or scenes from the mundane life he changed the direction of 18th century nature poetry to everyday life and scenes of the countryside he wrote many anti slavery poems and among it we are very famous the negro's complaint published in 1788 and it is often quoted by martin luther king so this has the importance of william cooper uh, in the history of english literature he wrote many anti slavery poems and we have uh, many quotations by uh, william cooper who are recited by many people who are in the uh, society to reform it and we have martin luther king who often quoted william cooper's lines from the complaint of negro now dear student if you look at the career of william cooper or his writing or the poems like the negro's complaint you will understand there is a reformer in this poet and he wanted to say something to the society he wanted to reform the society and hence he is writing uh the poems or he is composing the poems in the uh, direction so uh, his stance as a anti slavery poet is very important in the history of english literature so dear students this is all about the history of english literature and william cooper if you have any problem any query you can directly ask uh, in the comment section or email on contact literature simply at gmail.com i will reply to your comment and email as well so thank you very much for watching the complete video so please like this video share this video among your friends and subscribe to our channel literature simply